Hello all. Today we're going to talk about rocket science. Who knows a thing or two about rocket science? Definitely not this guy. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I, I, I don't know anything about that. I do know a couple things about programming PLCs though. Programmable logic controllers, aka industrial control computers. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of that right now. We're going to go there. Just what uh, one of the things I know and I want to share it with you. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and open up our interface software. This is how we actually talk to the PLCs with our personal computers. We're going to say yes, get on with it. And when it comes up, this is the window we see. So we're going to go ahead and click on the file and open up a new project. We're going to be programming in ladder. So the flow chart will be another video, I promise you. So we're going to do a simple motor starter start stop program. So let's go ahead and name this start stop we're going to go ahead and throw memory in there too. Memory is something I'm going to explain to you momentarily. Okay, so what we're going to do first, bring that down. I'm going to resize this window. Now that we're full screen, I want to go ahead and start you off. Now when it comes up, we've selected new. We want to have this new file control a motor. Now this motor is attached to a pump in the real world, wink wink. So we're just going to go with that. First things first though, we see this start here button. This is where we're going to bring up the dialog to set up our hardware. When you set your hardware up, basically you're telling this program what type of PLC you have. Every PLC on this list is different. Now if we had the PLC with us and had the programming cable plugged in, we could click on auto and it would detect what it is. I don't have it plugged in right now. We'll save that for another video. We're going to go with manual today. I know for a fact the type we own is an ACE222. Depending upon whatever one you have, if you had one with all these magical ins and outs, you could probably go with that. Today, we're going to be programming this bad boy. This one, we're not using any high-speed counters or stepper motor outputs. So we're just going to skip those, leave them at none. Now that we've got our ACE222 set up in this software, we're going to go ahead and start building the program. Now there are two major types of instructions that we're going to be using. We're going to be using input contacts and output coils. As far as that goes, we're going to start off with one input contact because it acts like a set of contacts that hasn't, hasn't made contact with each other. Very easy, quick little definition there. Now this button here, this one is actually attached to the tag tag address system. Now when I bring up this input bit, it says input digital. What that means is, is this input going to be on or off, or is it going to represent one that changes through a variable range? This one we're looking at is going to be an input bit, which is a digital in. So on this particular type of PLC, it's got banks of inputs. The first bank is B1. And the first input, you know, B1. So we're going to grab that input. We're going to click it again to select it. And we're going to rename it. So usually on your ladder diagrams, you always put the stop push button first. And they don't like spaces, so we got to put underscores in there. PB stands for push button. And for the stop, we're going to go with red. Put the color in there. Nice little instruction, right? 
Now, if you did it right, it does populate here, and a green little background shows. Hey, it's done right. Yay, hurry for my team. <sighs> so, we're going to OK that, and it sends that address, the tag, there. Now, you see there's an error down here. It doesn't like it. Rung needs a coil or function. Ah, well, we'll get to that later. So first, I'm going to go ahead and add another contact. Now, this particular contact, we've got a stop, and I'll explain that a little bit later. But we need a start, right? So let's go ahead and pull up our tag database here. We'll pull up an input, and you see that this one, B1, has come to the bottom. Well, we named it, so alphabetically it's last. The next one up, input, bit, bank, input 2. So, B bank, input 2. We're going to call this one the start, push button, and this one's going to be green because green is go, right? Yeah, select it, tag name populates here, it's a normally open, OK. There it is. So we've got our stop, we've got our start. Um, let's let's give it an output. So that's a coil, right? It says out. We're going to go ahead and set her there. Now this one's going to be acting as though the input conditions are live on and off. Okay. So let's go ahead and set our output bit tag based address here. Now when we talk about output digital. That's one of those that is an output and digital means on or off. Is there a variable range on this? Nope, not on digital. So when we bring that up, the banks of digital outputs are the D and the E bank. So we're going to start at the top, easy enough. Could you start at the bottom? If you really wanted to, sure you could. Is it logical? No, no it is not. Top down, left, right. We're going to name this one well, what are we controlling? We're controlling a pump motor, right? So let's go ahead and type pump motor. There it is. And we'll select that tag. And if you did it right, it'll populate here. It likes it. We're going to go ahead and keep it as a standard output. OK. Now it's got an assigned address from the tag database. Okay, so this thing would work just like this, because for the stop button, in the real world, the physical button we're going to wire to this has contacts that are normally closed. You push the button, they open up. So it's going to allow logical continuity through this contact, and it's going to be waiting right here until you press the start button. Once you press the start button, it's going to allow logical continuity to pass through the input conditions, and they will induce this output to register a 1. It'll energize this output. The pump motor will then come on, if that's what you have the physical terminal hooked to. It would behoove of you to do so if you want your system to run. Now, this means you still have to hold the button to keep the pump running. So we have this thing here, this mem, memory, right? We want it to remember. We want to latch this output, also known as a holding circuit. To do that, we've got to build a parallel instruction. And it's real easy to do if we just ask it nicely. So now we've got our parallel rung. Now let's go ahead and bring this normally open contact over and drop it in there. Now, this contact needs to look at the status of this output because when we pulse this and it turns this on, this is going to be the one you want to take over the job of holding that button, right? So instead of holding the button, it's going to act like an auxiliary contact on this motor starter. So, as such, we'll pull up our address database. We'll look for pump motor. Now, yes, we're looking in the outputs, right? Because we're going to look at the status of an output 
to judge what this input's doing. So we're going to select pump motor because that's how it's done. And once this actually has that address in it, it's going to look at the status of this. So logical continuity, you push the button, grants logical continuity, energizes this. Now that this is on, this actually shows logical continuity down around this parallel rung. So as soon as you let this button go, this thing has already taken its place. How do you turn it off? Well, that's easy enough. You push the stop button, right? And then that opens, breaks contact here. Therefore, this no longer has logical continuity just being fed to it. It cannot pass what it doesn't have. On, off. Nice and easy, right? Shall we add a, a quick little frill? Why not? So, let's go ahead and bring an input instruction down here. And we're going to actually look at the status of this output once again, right? Because I've decided we need to put a light here that is on when the pump is running. So, we're going to pull this back up again. We're going to look at the output status. And we're going to select pump motor. Once this pump is on, we want to close this contact and turn on a light. So, another thing we'll do, bring this output instruction here. And we're going to do just like we did for the pump. We're going to grab an output bit. We're going to get the next one on the list. Output bit 2, bank D number 2. Now this is going to be the pump run. lamp and we're gonna give this one a green all right so select it's just a standard operating coil not a latch okay now we know when it's on should we set one up to know when it's off Nah, why not so if we bring a coil down drop it in there now you'll notice I'm kinda going backwards on this one right well, that's, that's okay. You can kind of do this either way. It doesn't hurt. Pump. Off. And we're going to go with red on this one. I'm going to select that. It's going to drop that tag-based address in there. Oh, we need our input condition, right? We're going to go different. We're going to make this one normally closed. And if we address this off of the same place that this green one is addressed off of, it's going to be on when that is off. Pretty nifty little, little way to do things here. So let's go ahead and grab that output bit. And we're going to bring it off of the pump motor. But drop that tag in there. So when the pump is running, the green light's on. And this one flips, so it's off. When the pump is off, this one's on. And this is lit up. This right here is off. And there is a simple start-stop ladder logic program. One of the things that you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to debug them. But, you know, if you've got it pulled up, you will see any logical conflicts down in this window down here. So you are now ready to drop this into the PLC and wire it up. I want to thank you for watching my video today. Please do come back for more in the future. We'll be downloading them into PLCs, watching them run, and we'll get them going. Until then, you all have a nice evening.